back in the episode of Victoria 2 Order Darkness. Chinese, let's play! I'm back here, guys, um, bringing you guys some good and bad news. So, basically, I, uh, didn't even, didn't even take me, like, a second to realize this, but, um, I cannot, when I was looking through the war goals and, you know, just mess, about to do, about to add, oh, whoops, about to add, um, demand concession from Guns I take from Monster and, you know, go over my infamy limit, I was like, you know, wait a minute, we are, in this moment, I'm basically freeing another nation, right? Right? So wouldn't that mean that the nation that I would, you know, release in the future be showing up on liberate people or liberate country? So, you know, I decided to check this out and the only people that we can actually free are the Shanghai Critique, which is actually the reason that region we are going after right now. Which, I was just like, whoa, so you mean, wait a minute, the region that we are actually taking over right now could actually be used to be taking over other another region but so yeah basically we could do what I wanted to do it just means that we'd have to take over this we'd have to release this nation that might make China look very awkward indeed like we'd have all of Canadian China and then we have this just random piece of China like right by here of Shenzi so you know in the end I've decided you know I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna end the war right now fine and just finally take over Shenzi and if I want to in the future, and my infamy does not go down fast enough, I'll probably just free these guys, and that way we can have another infamy. So everyone, that was this like fifth war, or fourth war of China, of Chinese aggression or China's really attempts trying to attempt to control me, but it does not work. And so um, now it's time for us to just burn a lot of infamy because we're not going to war for a very long time, and Austria wants an alliance with me. Uh, when did I not get an alliance with Germany? I don't remember this. Um, why do I want an alliance with Austria? Let's, let's look at these options here. Why would I want an alliance with Austria? Let's see. The UK, everyone really loves me. Except, oh yeah, we have to keep increasing relations with America. They still, I, I don't feel safe unless America is like above 150. That way they can't just instantly declare war. And why would you want an alliance with us? You don't even like us. Japan actually, wow, we are basically... Like, if I was to look at diplomatic map modes, since we haven't really gone to war with any of the other great powers, or really sided in almost any major conflict, our relationship with almost every other country around us is actually really well. I mean, we really are not hated by anyone. Everyone really basically just loves Canada. Like, relationship-wise, yeah, you see? Everyone basically loves Canada, except for the French and the Austrians. I don't care about the French, and I don't care about the Austrians. So, in retrospect, that makes sense. So, and apparently the Germans are being ripped apart by the, uh, French and, uh, Ottoman Empire. Oh, I know what happened. They probably asked me to join a war and I did not accept, or well, I didn't really notice it. And so now they're like, meh, I don't care about you. But, yeah, it seems like, yeah, and then China is just, like, all red. I mean, yeah, really, we haven't really messed up anyone. We are, like, the most liked country in the world. How's America doing? Nope, they are definitely more despised than me. Like, they have, yeah, they have way more hatred. A lot more nations hate America, so. Yeah, and this, and this, this Let's Play, we are more liked by the world. The world loves us. We love the world. And I apparently have to upgrade a lot of stuff off screen and do, because I uh, do a lot of stuff. Because apparently our trains are not quite the best anymore, so I'll be right back. And seamless transition. So, we are back here, and as you can see, I upgraded all of our holdings. All of them. Like, all of them I could, I mean, now that, now that, oh, whoops, I missed one again! Dang it! Ah, uh, now that, now that we have, like, upgraded all the holdings, I mean, um, you know, it's just great. And some people might say, well, why do you take so much pride in, like, upgrading your railroads and stuff? Well, it's kind of like a two-part, because, like, before 1890, if you guys look at our railroad system, our railroad system stunk. Like, it was legitly just a bad railroad system, and now, UK. Sorry, UK is always my ally. They are right next to me, and they honestly, if we were, if we were not friends in this game, I think the UK would probably be able to destroy me, because that's about more army men that I could deal with. So, but anyways, like I was saying, I take national pride in the railroads, just because, you know, we built all these railroads by hand. We built them. This wasn't like some foreign country that like, came in and built them for us. So we built these railroads by hand. And, you know, I take pride in that. I think I'm going to build another national army. 
because you know actually it would be a better the better way of doing this would probably be to do it off screen and I don't want to do another cut because that'd be really it's too short of time but right now we're just kind of just chilling out and the Netherlands conquered the rest of Nedjed so they're probably gonna gain some oil which is pretty cool you know getting oil is always a cool thing and we have still some uncivilized nations in today's world not necessarily the best thing in the world, and Ch is Persia actually winning a war against, no, they're allied with the Ottomans, so that's the worst people to be allied with. I'm still allied with my mighty UK and army friends, buddies. We're buddies, UK, that's all I gotta say, we're buddies. And the UK, I mean, the United States of America. What, Germany wants its alliance back, do I really want to go to war if, if something goes wrong? Well, I don't think they're at war with anyone, and I don't think they're gonna be at war anytime soon. So I got both my German and my uh, American, not American, not American, not American, but my German and my UK are friends back. That's great. It's always good to have these two guys, the two most powerful. Oh, and France is getting beaten up too. That's always great, great to see. So UK and the Germans are just really good friends, and yeah, we basically have the most powerful alliance in the world. Now, if, one, if they were both going to go to war, who would I choose? I probably just remain neutral in the matter because I do not want to make any nation mad. And staying neutral, the plea of neutrality is the best thing to do in these kind of situations. That's what I personally believe in because that's what we Canadians kind of stuck to this entire game. And you know what? It paid off pretty beautifully. As I've shown last episode, we are basically friends with almost everyone that is not unimportant nations. And yes, I'm referring to all these guys, they aren't important. What? Did I just make Ala. Oh, great. I made enemies because I made friends with these two. Yep, yeah, okay, never mind. Seems like we're about the same as the United States now. We're not the most liked country anymore. And the communists, of course, have just done one of their uprisings. How big is it? Not big enough for me to really say anything. Just about average. It's about an average uprising, if I must say. I think we might have just killed one of our troops, though. And, yeah, they don't really have control of the capital. Most of my men will be able to handle it. This is... Uh, Sometimes I really wish these guys would stop these revolutions and stuff. But, you know, my people are just trying to express their beliefs. They believe that I should not be taxing them so hard. You know, and, you know, I honestly wouldn't do that so much, but we honestly do need the taxes. And it keeps our economy afloat when we have so much taxes going on. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a sad thing to see. It just is. It's just really sad. But that's the way, that's just the way the cookie crumbles, is that you need high taxes. And... No, I can't actually do anything about it to lower them either. That's also the other point I like to make now. We can't actually do anything to lower our taxes, so you might as well just keep them high. Just might as well. It's, it's already there. You might as well just keep it high. And right now, yeah. So, in other news, Canada is just kind of like, like I said, we're just, this is very much just kind of a relaxing period. I mean, I'll show you guys the population screen because I love the population screen. It's always interesting to see the percentages of everyone. We actually have a almost evenly amount of, of Nefarians and Befarians, which are both Chinese people. I don't remember which one's the main Chinese land, but they're both Chinese. I don't remember exactly which one, but they make up about seven, almost 80% of our empire. Like, if we didn't have them in our empire, this, this is like the other 20%. And then you have to divide that 20% into even smaller percentages, because only about 3.7 of that 20% actually controls the world. Which is very weak. Actually controls the other, like... 68% like it's we have 267 million people in our country and only about 3 30 3.7 percent of that 267 controls the rest that's a very very unequal number but Canada Canada like it says doesn't really care for its colonial conquest it cares about the natural means and the natural anger of Canada which is sung in our national and sung in our national anthem our home and native land it is ours that's what we care about, our home and native land, true patriot love, all the way, everyone. All the way. And across the Antarctica, of course, we always do mission. We always do missions like this. And I'm curious, because I have 66, 66 million people. How much does the UK have? 69? Oh, I am so close to overshadowing the British. Oh, this is like a good, okay, place under the sun. Okay, another, so our nation is now one of the most prestigious great powers on Earth. Thank you. From Ottawa to the far flung provinces beyond, our flag flutters proudly in the world, striking fear into the hearts of anyone who dares oppose us. 
in celebration of our dominance in our reign, an imperial parade is being planned in Ottawa. The question that now precedes us, should we invite our foreign dignitaries to this joyous occasion, or shall we simply conclude that no other nation is fit to back with... Oh, that is a really selfish... That is a really selfish... I mean, we may be, like, against, like, other... We may be discriminatory, but that's just, like, we are discriminatory. No, 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 no. All must see our grand splendor. Yeah, look what we have done in our 20 years of being alive. We have basically made Canada into this nation. This all-powerful, almighty nation. That should actually make our economy go way up because we have tons of farmers now. And I really have not been working on naval tech. I really got to get back into that. But naval tech... Now that I actually have lots of land forces, and I probably will not be fighting anyone in naval tech technology unless I'm counting America. I mean, the only country I probably will fight in naval tech is the Europeans, but honestly, if they try to land any troops in my country, they'll probably just die. Like, just flat out just die. So let's get some behavioralism. Maybe we might be able to get a little bit of start on the, uh, what, what market is it again? I forget. The, uh, radio market. And how are we doing? Tanks have not been produced yet. That is good. Airplanes, we should be one of the top. In fact, the Germans are the top. How do the Germans beat me in all these respective areas? I will never know. I will never know, people. It honestly befounds me how much the Germans beat me in all these areas of Congress. But it does not matter because we are... We are still Canada. And Canada pride can never be broken. And planned economy. So we are now planned economy, people. And how are you guys doing? In con yeah, it seems like we basically got control back under my country. Uh, the rebels did do a lot of good damage to my uh, country because they just had a lot of what? Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Do I have not have three armies? Oh shoot! They actually destroyed a couple of my armies. Hmm. Seems like I'm like I said. Seems like I'm gonna have to start doing that fish that shipping idea that I was thinking of a long time ago. So let's go start shipping some of these guys over because apparently Canada is actually in a dire position. I did not know that. So, um, uh, shoot. Okay, that, that actually changes things. Seems like we're going to have to start shipping over some of our military might to go bring our actual home and native land underneath our control because our colonies aren't having trouble right now, but it's actually our... Wow. So Canada is actually, it's uh, apparently by their standards, Canada is half losing the war because almost half of our- No, we still- These guys are still alive. We still have these guys alive. And we still got these guys alive. But I guess I'll still go ship another, like, army over there. That way it'll help us a little bit. Because it looks like- It looks like they have conquered a lot. And they have a, hopefully don't conquer Alaska. Alaska has a lot of valuable resources for us, which- I am so glad in the beginning of this game I took over Alaska. Alaska was like the best like best move to strike back against all the Imperial powers And I think doing that like just reminiscing here for a second I think that was a conflict that really solidified us as more than just another colony of the British or another like released nation of Africa This really did solidify us as an actual nation to be contended with and You know us succeeding was no small part due to the fact that we had the great British on our side, but you know It's great to see that and so that new army over here that was originally from Gunzai is now going to go help with a couple of restoration movements. I mean, this... I, I honestly don't think any real revolution movement will ever be able to succeed in, in Canada. This movement is really scary, though. That movement is really scary, though. They were both to enact at the exact same time. Like, I don't know if you guys can hear me snap. They were to get both react at the exact same time. That could potentially become dangerous. And apparently we have some people with voters' rights movement. Suppress, suppress, suppress. Yep, and that's how you suppress everyone. You know what? I I never really use the suppress mo the suppress movements that often. I want to see if they actually are effective. Okay. Okay. Now we're still in. We're still. We're still not that far away from where we were. We only traveled about a year. And holy shoot! Now we have lots of money. Oh man, we have lots and lots of money. Just tons of- Oh, we finally can lower the taxes. Okay, this will make everything better. And since we have so much taxes, okay, I think I'll probably lower to 30% and then, let's see, 30%? Yeah, we still are making tons and tons of money. So 30% taxes, that should drop our rev rebel rate by a lot, and that should give our people a much better time controlling themselves. Yeah, and still getting about a thousand, that's good. And that should, like, make everyone more happy and that's there's a reason why these guys have taken over it's because 
we actually have the liberals back in power. They just don't seem to want to die, do they? You guys just do not seem to want to die. What are you guys? Full laissez-faire or intervention? Interventionism did not help me out either. Communists! There we go. Communism, everyone. Okay, I could still keep the taxes, and you know what? We're just gonna completely adopt the Communist Party. The Communist Manifesto should be helping us. You know what? You know what? This economy... Ah. This... Oh, we can finally build tanks. Okay. This is a great day for us. Okay, time to start building tanks. Okay, what provinces should we build them in? Almost every province that we don't have anything built in, so... Let's see, build some tanks, build some tanks. We want to build like four or five factories so that we already have a good lead on the other countries. And I don't even care if I might not have, I might not have all the resources for building tanks. But at least I'll have, at least I won't be like my French campaign where I like say, hey, I want to upgrade all my men. But then I can't because like I have no tanks in my country. So yeah, this should be much better. And yeah. Seems like we're starting, and it seems like the war with the rebels is starting to go back in our way. I don't know. I felt, it felt like they were winning though. It felt like they were just like destroying us, but in actuality, we're still like doing a lot. And what? Sabotage? Whatever. Okay. Acquire Moldavia. What happened here? Um. I. Hmm. Uh. I guess Romania acquired Moldavia. That's the best I can work out from there. Huh. Yeah, I, I guess that's the best I can work out. So, um, let's see. Gunzai took two regions. Wow, they took two regions of China. So that means... Oh, that is so good. So that means in a couple months, I'll be able to just downright annex China. Wait, how long do I have until my peace lasts? Until my peace is gone? Wait, did they imbu industrialize? No, they did not. Okay, good. Um, August 19th, 2011. August 10th. Okay, so we have three years. So, um, yeah, I think this is basically...